Hey guys, so uh, yesterday I shot USA versus South Korea and I just wanted to go over um, how the workflow works and what the process is throughout the whole entire day. So here I am just waiting to get my credentials. Um, it's the first thing you want to do, you got to park and sometimes you have to pay for parking. Um, got to be prepared for that. I was actually unprepared. I had to go to an ATM because it threw me off. This was actually my first pro event that I covered. Uh, a couple weeks before that, I covered USC, but that's college. Um, once you get your credentials, uh, you just go through the media entrance. They check your bags. <clears throat> every venue is different. Every place is different, but generally they're going to check your bags, make sure you don't have any weapons on you or anything dangerous. Um, uh, like I said, bring money just in case you have to pay for parking. Just because you have media access doesn't mean that you get free parking all the time. Uh, every place is different. Checking our bags. Sped up the video because a lot of it, this uh, the raw footage was about two and a half hours. So I had to speed this thing up and cut out a lot of stuff. She's checking my bag, she's marking it, go through the thing. Kind of like a whole airport kind of process. <clears throat> and I gotta tell you, like, this is, it, it didn't even feel like work. It, it, it just, it's amazing. Like, I, n I never thought that I would get this far with photography, to be honest. Like, I really wanted to, and I pushed and pushed and pushed, but sometimes I hit walls, and you just can't let that, like, unmotivate you. You just have to keep going. Um, so I went down in the stadium, um, very bottom, there's a security guard, they check your credential, and then you just go through, and then you have to stay through this narrow path, um, you have to be very, they're very strict, and then now I'm in the media room. So come in the media room, some places give you a vest, like NFL, they'll give you the little, uh, tan vest, and then these ones, soccer, might give you like the orange one, they're all different, but some will give you a vest, others, they just want your credential around your neck, but some require both, so he gave me the vest, and then now it's time to just put everything out on the table. And what you do with pro events is you want to mark your spot. Um, I don't think I do it in this video right here because I, I cut it out. But you get like gaffer tape or just duct tape, white tape, and just mark the table and put your name. So I would put Seth Sanchez, Cal Sport Media, uh, full game. You want to put full game if you're going to stay for the whole game. If you're just going to stay for one half, you just put first half or second half or whatever it is. Um, for all your equipment like this, you're gonna, you can't bring out, um, generally you can't bring it all out. I mean, you can some places, like I think for here they allowed it, but it's just a hassle to bring everything out. So, you generally want to keep your laptop and everything, your bag and lenses and stuff you're not using, in here in your media room, and you mark your spot and leave it there. And you think that's, it's very dangerous. Um, it is, because it's, it's, um, anyone can pick it up and, uh, and take it. So you need to get locks. The think tank have locks on the zippers, and then you can also just get like a bike lock and lock it up against the uh, chair leg. Same with your laptop. Um, I bought one for the, my laptop so you can keep it there and locked. Um, what I was doing earlier when I was walking back and forth with my uh, laptop cable, I was looking for um, a wall charger. This one that we were up against didn't have one. There was ones over on the right and the left, but they're too far. So if that ever happens, don't be afraid to ask the, someone in charge uh, for an extension cord they'll give you one. That's what they did for us. So there's the lock for my laptop. I'm just untangling it and going under the table and going to lock it in place. Um, for Max, I think it's called a PNY lock. Uh, it, they have different ones for uh, each type of Mac. Mine's a retina display. But yeah, you just pop it through the little crack in between the screen and the uh, keyboard and it just locks in place. Um, and I, I, I heard that it's very easy for people to you know, cut through a lock easily like that, a bike lock, but that they have to be having those, um, I forget what they're called, they have to have them on them and they're pretty large, and even if they have small ones, I doubt that anyone in the media room is going to be carrying that, because like I said, they check you when you walk through stuff, but right, like that right there, I'm putting the lock on the uh, Think Tank bag, <clears throat> that's a Think Tank Airport Security uh, version 2, uh, really good, and then I'm putting the lock right now on the actual bag where the handle is on the bag, you can wrap that around the chair leg or the table leg, put it on the vest, <clears throat> so once you got everything locked up, um, you're pretty much all set to go, and you just, then you have to go out and mark your spot on the field, uh, 
it all getting there early is important. You, I'm here. We're about two hours before, two or three hours before the. Um, I forget what they call soccer. I think it's kickoff or I don't know. That's football. Uh, before the game starts, <clears throat> you want to have your spot marked in the media room, and you want to have your marked spot on the the behind the goal. Um, so getting there early is really important. Okay, so now I'm all set up. Later on, they brought me the extension cord and I plugged it in, but I just cut that out because it took too long. So, got the 400, attached to the 1DX with the monopod, and we are ready to go shoot. <clears throat> now, while you're shooting, it is very important to chimp. And I read online that it's you don't want to do that. People say, oh, don't chimp. It's stupid. You can't chimp. That's very immature. Or, or amateur. And, I mean, you have to with this kind of job. There's times for it, like right there. The play's over. You quickly go through it and look at your pictures and check the sharpness and make sure that your photos are coming out clean and sharp and that it's framed right. If it's no good, if it's out of focus, if it just doesn't look good, you got to delete it because it saves you on your time because your workflow with this type of job, when you're working for a media outlet, you have to be really fast. You have to, you can't, you, when you have a bunch of photos stacked up because you're, you're just popping frames off hoping that you get the shot but when you have those bad ones mixed in there it just takes more time to go through them when you're going through photo mechanic picking the ones you want so what you want to do is while you're popping shots off and once the plays are far away from you and there's nothing going on or the ball goes out of bounds you quickly check your, uh, your photos that you have right there and just delete them delete any of the ones that are bad so you keep you, you, so you save more time when you're going to be editing them so I'm going to only show you the first half of the game. So these are some photos playing in the back of what I got. Um, so first half, you got to get at least 8 to 10 good photos, which is actually pretty easy. I mean, sometimes you might have a hard time because in this type of situation, I was dealing with shadows and sunlight way over there. You can see where it's all blown out. And it actually got worse. Like, it wasn't just like a chunk of dark and a chunk of light. It was It got really chopped up and it was really complicated. So here we are, we're in the uh, media room now, the first half was done. You can see that I marked my spot right below my hand right there, right in front of the laptop where it says CalSport Media. Um, <clears throat> so I'm popping all my stuff in the cards, and then I go in the computer, dump them all in there. We're in Photo Mechanic right now. <clears throat> that is the program you want to use for this type of job. You need Photo Mechanic 5, I'm telling you right now. Get it, it's not that expensive, I think it's like 100 bucks. Um, you need a fast memory card, you need a fast memory card reader. Um, if you, uh, the memory card reader I have is a Lexar, uh, th a USB 3.0, and I have UDM, UDMA Lexar 7, uh, 16 gigabyte 1000X memory cards for my 1DX, so I don't have to worry about buffer, and it's just great. So, yeah, that guy was talking to me while we were editing, he's a really cool guy. He was just asking me if I knew who some people were, because you need to know who the people are in these photos. You can't, it's not just about popping off shots and then editing them and cropping them and sending them. You need to identify who they are. That's why I have the roster right there on the left side of the computer. You need to put them into Photo Mechanic. There's actually a great uh, program you can pay uh, 100 bucks a year for, or $300, I think, for three years. And you can download online rosters and put it inside uh, Photo Mechanic and do coding where you put like forward slash us 17 forward slash and then the usa player number 17 will automatically be filled out in the program i'll make a video going over that in the future and it's it just saves your life it is amazing if you're doing this type of job and you don't have that yet i'm sure you probably do because it's, it's well known but get it it's just helpful it saves so much time so once you're done tag you tag all the photos you want you go you dump all your photos in photo mechanic and you quickly scan them through and just use the arrow keys and hit T to tag on Photo Mechanic. And you just keep going through and pick all the good ones only, just the best ones. You can go over 8 to 10. I, I usually send a bunch. Um, but if you only send 8 to 10, then you're just not going to get as many sales. I mean, it, it all depends because you're working on such a hard time. But the video cuts off right here because my battery died unfortunately but once you're done uh, tagging them in phone mechanic you're gonna basically go you go to the tab on the top and hit tagged only show the tagged ones that you picked I sent 28 I think on this first half which is a lot but for my job they want for uh, between 40 and 60 photos um, 
you can send more than eight to ten, and if you do, you have a higher chance of getting photo sales because this job doesn't pay you. You get sixty percent commission from this job, which means anytime you make a sale, you get sixty percent off that sale, and the price varies. It can go from forty dollars to seven thousand dollars, and the seven thousand dollar photo sale would be like if you got a photo sold to EA Sports for the front cover of Madden 2015 or whatever, something like that, like a big client. So anyway, you're sent once you're done picking the photos and photo mechanic, you're tagging them, then you have to caption each one. You need to put uh, uh, February 1st, 2014, uh, it was, this was in Carson, uh, California, United States, dash, and then put a description of what's going on in the photo. Uh, say, for example, USA, uh, I don't know the names, like uh, uh, Tony Gonzalez, number four, uh, moves the ball down the field past uh, South Korea, uh, Huan Jo Lee, uh, number 13. Uh, during the friendly game between USA and South Korea at the StubHub Center in Carson, California, and then put your credit, credit image, Seth Sanchez, slash Calsport Media. You need to do that for every single photo. There are shortcuts for it, and I'll go over that. It's not as stressful as you think. You don't have to put that whole thing for each photo because there's shortcuts, so you can preset it and then just put a description of the players only, and then there's also shortcuts for putting the players' names, so you don't have to worry about spelling and all that. I'll go over that on the next video. Um, and then you move them over to Photoshop. I shoot RAW. <clears throat> I've seen people who shoot JPEG. It's okay, but you want to shoot RAW. I suggest you shoot RAW. Um, that's just my my opinion though. So once you're in Photoshop, you go into Adobe Camera Raw and you're just popping through them. You got to crop them a certain dimension. Every job's different. Um, and then once you select them and crop them all equally to the same dimensions, then you can just start editing them the way you need to edit them. You need to correct whatever you need to correct. Be quick about it because like I said, you're this is all during the first half or during halftime. You need to send those eight to ten during halftime. But if you're sending more than that, it's going to take longer, and you're probably going to—they're going to go into the second half a little bit further. If it's soccer or third quarter, if it's football or whatever, that's okay. As long as you got a lot of photos and you meet the requirements for your job, it's okay. Send what you can. Um, and once you're done editing them, you need to go into the FTP server, something like FileZilla or even Photo Mechanic has it built in. But I use FileZilla. You log into your FTP that they give you. They give you all the information for your username, uh, the host. And the password, and then you just drag them in there, and then they send off. And the, all these places have Wi-Fi, just in case something goes wrong. I have a little uh, MiFi hotspot for Verizon. Um, it's like it's free if you uh, add it to a line. It's cost like th three hundred bucks if you uh, add it, buy it out of contract. But I have that just in case something goes wrong. You never know. It's really stressful. Actually, something did happen during this game. The internet was acting kind of weird, but then luckily I just turned off my Wi-Fi and turned it back on, and it just everything sent like that it was in, i sent 28 photos in like two seconds it's super fast wi-fi at those places um so yeah that's it that's the workflow of this i really hope you guys enjoyed the video um i wanted to make this video because i didn't really see um anyone talking really detailed about how it all works and just wanted to make it clear to you and uh, if you guys have any questions feel free to ask um i'm i love talking about it i love helping people out with this it's a passion i have and like i said i never thought that this day would come where i would be covering a professional event and shooting as a professional sports photographer it is just amazing it is the funnest thing i've ever done and i i just it does not feel like work. It is the funnest thing. I was really upset when the game ended. But, yeah, just comment, share this, please. I'm trying to get this channel going. I'm trying to get it started. Uh, I really appreciate it. And just leave any comments. All right, guys? Take care.